my question was, what about all the insurance companies that are pulling out, refusing to participate? Oh, in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, yeah. yeah. There have been some insurance companies that are pulling out, but my understanding, Christina, you can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but the majority of the exchanges are doing very well. In fact, in, like in California, as an example, the first year, the costs that were coming in were lower than what the health economists were projected because a lot of the insurance companies wanted to get in on that market. This was an anticipated problem that in some states, there was a, a smaller number of insurance companies because insurance companies have to be incorporated in the state that they provide insurance for. They can't incorporate insurance across state lines. Right. Actually, there's three states that you can. Maine is one of them, and I forget the other two. But the bottom line is that this is part of the adjustments that were anticipated to be needed to be made when the bill was passed. Yes. And the, interestingly, the three states that allow insurance companies that are not incorporated in their state to come in and provide insurance, no insurance company has really taken that on because it is an enormous investment to move into a new state because you, you have to do the actuarial research and uh, an analysis of the competition. And, and along uh, those same lines, Phil, in response to our, our caller's question, there's been a huge amount of rhetoric, which our caller probably has heard, about we're going to increase competition by allowing companies to sell across state lines. That is an enormously, as Philip just pointed out, enormously complex situation because state insurance departments and their regulations are unique to each state. Most of them have, you know, primary provisions for things like making sure that the insurance companies allowed to practice in their states or to sell have sufficient reserves to cover catastrophic problems and that sort of thing. It's 50 different systems. And so it's extremely complex, as Phil just indicated, to try and sell across state lines. And also, this inflammatory and reckless rhetoric about the insurance markets exploding or imploding is just not true. There's a handful of states which contain a number of counties in which insurers have indeed pulled out. But important for you to know and to recognize that one of the features of the Affordable Care Act was that it provided premium stabilization programs so that companies that end up with high-risk populations, extremely costly ones, would receive subsidy from premium contributed by companies that enjoy low-risk populations. So that was a provision that was built into the law. And actually, if you were to, when you leave the webinar, go to the Health Affairs Journal blog, was posted this morning about research that was done on what actually the conditions of the stabilization program are, and they're actually very good. So. It's going to be critical, and I encourage people who are still on to listen and to watch during the next six to eight weeks, because this is the period of time when insurance companies begin to set rates for their upcoming fiscal period, how this is all going to turn around in terms of uh, insurance companies staying in the marketplace or not. But for the most part and overall, this rhetoric about death spiral, that's actually an insurance term. That means the risk pool is getting worse and people are dropping out. So as Philip was talking earlier, the risk pool is shrinking, so that concentrates bad risk. That actually is not happening. There is no death spiral. So this is just part of the political rhetoric that's really reckless because it's creating an impression among the public that this thing is going to drop dead, and, and there's no indication at all that that's the case, not at this point. Well Great. said. Thank you, Christina. <laughs>